So good afternoon, good morning, wherever you are in the country. Thanks so much for being here, everyone. I do truly appreciate it. The topic for today is my favorite um, favorite um, long call setups, or not long call, but my favorite long setups, my favorite short setups um, in the market. And to preface that, um, I, as you guys know, I'm very much a, a pattern trader. Patterns matter a lot to me. Um, it, well, it, I mean, it, it is the foundation, really, of my trading. It's, it's, not, um, it, it's not indicators, um, really, at all. It, it is simple things like trend support and resistance and the basic patterns that the market um, repeats over and over. Um, before I came over here, I was just giving a little bit of a talk about um, consistency. And all I care about, um, um, we, we as a nation, we as a, a trading community anymore seem to be so wrapped up in this idea, I gotta get rich quick. It's all about giant percentages and not a word about being consistent. Um, we have all made trades, particularly in options that were 100, 150, 200, 300% returns. But the question is, can you do it again? And after you do it, can you hold on to it? See, consistency is very, very important in, in your trading. And what I look for is patterns that repeat themselves on a regular basis. Um, um, I don't know anything more about the market than anybody else does. Um, all I know is that these patterns have a higher rate of expectancy than others in the market. Um, you guys know that I traded the 3-8 trap and the 3-8 trap is if the 3 crosses up through the 8 and it can't hold that's not a trade because I know that those trades fail 50% of the time and 50% isn't good enough. Hard to make money with a win-loss ratio of 50%. I want a higher win-loss ratio than that. And so I looked and I studied really, really hard price action in charts and um, there are specific patterns that just repeat themselves over and over and over. So I looked for those patterns in the bigger setups of the market. So um, I'm going to use a couple examples here today that that may be some you know some older trades, but um, I want I want you to be focused on the setup and the pattern itself more than what happened in the trade. Um, um, you know, I'll show a chart and then it degrades into this discussion. Well, why is this good and where did that go? And, and I don't know where it's going, guys. I, I, I don't. I, I have no idea. All I know is that I have a pattern that plays out more often than not to my benefit and gives me an edge. Okay? And I see these patterns all the time in the market. And... I'm looking for um, those winning trades that come out of those patterns. So for example, a pattern that I really love, let's um, take a look at some short patterns here initially. Take a look at Microsoft. Oops, I mean Apple. Okay. One of my favorite all-time shorting patterns at all time is first a lower high when we have begun some kind of a downtrend we had a lower high here okay from this high and then we continue to follow that on down with lower highs okay now I told everybody in right way options about a possible trade using a ratio spread trade. And the only reason it was a ratio spread trade is because it was a lot 
safer and a lot more comfortable to trade than a directional short here on Apple. But this is the classic pullback opportunity where we're moving down, we rally back up, we find that resistance in the chart, and then sellers show up. And it doesn't matter how you attack this. It doesn't matter if you choose to attack it with a directional put, shorting the stock, doing credit spread trades, trades up here, doing ratio spread trades up here. It doesn't matter how you attack it. It is a very good pattern to trade. And it repeats itself in the market over and over again. If I put standard moving averages on this chart, you're going to see there's that failure and we call this a blue ice failure. Now the actual blue ice failure was coined. It, he didn't actually call it the blue ice failure. And years and years ago, I participated uh, a lot with a guy by the name of David Elliott. And um, before somebody asked me, no, it doesn't have anything, he didn't have anything to do with Elliott Wave. He was just a very, very good technical trader in the market. And he coined the phrase blue ice failure. His actual term was ice hole failure. And the reason we don't we don't use that ice hole failure, well, people will come back and say, what do you, what do you call me? Because um, <laughs> it's easy to mistake if you're not paying attention and, or if you talk as poorly as I do. Okay. Um, and the... The failure um, is when a price falls below the 50-day moving average, and this was what he called the blue eyes. And his little analogy about this was, you know, somebody's out there cruising along on the ice, and all of a sudden they fall through the ice. They fall through the ice, and they bob around in here for a while, and they struggle, and they struggle, and struggle, and come back. But by the time they get back over here, the hole that they fell in on is way over here and they can't get back there. They struggle to get up here, they bump their head on the blue ice and they drowned. That was his whole story on that. Now, kind of a grim story, but a lot of bearish patterns are kind of grim, grim stories like that. And it's where I really started to focus in on lower highs at tops for potential trades. And I'm looking for that that failure. Now, if you look right in here, if I shut price off and you envision where this failure was occurring right over here, how many of you see a potential moving average squeeze? We've all heard these terms, right? If you like the idea of the moving average squeeze, you're always going to find them coming together around a blue ice failure. Okay, that lower high in the chart, creating that issue in the trade. So again, this is a pullback opportunity trade because the price rallied back up, rallied back up into that 50 day moving average or that resistance. All right, and found that resistance in the 50 day, and it really was the resistance of the price that made the difference here. But it found that, and the sellers came back in. But you can see it's also a moving average squeeze to the downside. All right, so when you get all of these things combining together, and, and by the way, this could have been a failure through here a flat consolidation over and fail and it's the same pattern that instead of a pullback opportunity that's a pop out of the box short okay 1973 hog used to call it a poop out of the box short after i after i named it the pop out of the box and did that class on that is the poop out of the box short but <laughs> it doesn't matter um, how you look at it, it's the same thing. It's the same pattern, okay? And this pattern repeats itself with a very high um, win-loss ratio. I mean, very high. 
75 probably plus percent this wins so when you're talking about consistency in a trade that's pretty high consistency right okay oh you're welcome bobby and that becomes a very very productive trade and if you combine it with the pattern the pattern that I talked about here, just looking at the price action chart, okay? A lower high coming into the place, the pullback opportunity or the pop out of the box pattern, combining those together, the moving average squeeze, the, the fact that our 50 day moving average, notice that our 50 day moving average is starting to roll. starting to flatten out, starting to roll. Those are excellent shorting patterns to trade. By far, my very favorite pattern to trade is in the short sense of the market, looking for that downside move. And when I started trading these, I was just uh, mostly just trading stock and I would just short stock there and just get beautiful results out of that pattern okay now we do have the benefit here in um, Apple you guys probably well, some of you see it some of you don't those that watch the morning prep video probably know where I'm going with this right now we also have this head and shoulders pattern right here head and shoulders pattern at a top and it doesn't have to be at the very very top you can see we've got a little tiny one here okay it doesn't have to be at the top but if you combine that with a failure of the 50 you really have a powerful tool to trade by you know, just think about it failing the 50 moving average squeeze to the downside 50 starting to roll over and turn down you have a very powerful trade and and I want to um, I, I want to um, give you some context here that just because you miss this one doesn't mean it's over okay I said in the morning prep video there's the neckline of that head and shoulders my hope is that Apple rallies back because if it rallies back up and finds resistance in here someplace, there's the head to the neck, and we can expect this move to be very similar to that to the downside. So remember, you don't have to catch the first entry. You can catch the next one and just be incredibly profitable on a trade like that because they repeat themselves over and over and over so much in the market if you if I go continue with this short side look let's take a look at micron you guys see the possibility of what micron could be here there's our downtrend falling through the 50 notice that our short-term moving averages are starting to bunch up here they haven't crossed down yet and notice that that 50-day moving average hasn't flattened out or rolled. Think about this. What has to happen here? This may have to go sideways here for a period of time to let those things occur. That 50 start to flatten and roll. These short-term averages to cross down through or come together so we have a moving average squeeze it comes together somewhere around the trend and we move down and if you look at the chart guys and just ignore the moving averages here for a second just look at the price action we have this downtrend here in the chart and we've created a new resistance level in the chart it's that same failure failure pattern that's occurring here now I can't tell you if it occurs over here where that will be I can't tell you if it's gonna rally back it could rally back up into here that's perfectly fine 
Just show me failure there. Okay. So when it comes to short, and one of the things that I'm watching right now because we are so extended here in the market, I'm watching for those stocks that could be the early short. The early opportunity to pick up some downside because we would expect at any point in time the market will be pulling back. Okay, so I start looking for those potential trades and that opportunity that I can take advantage without taking a lot of risk. I can take advantage of that weakness starting to show up in some places in the market if the market starts to falter and roll over. Okay, is that making some sense, guys? So when it comes to short patterns, one of my favorite. Now, to continue on the short side of things, here for a second is if we look at a chart that's been that's moved down um, um, a lot here let's well let's look at MCD MCD isn't moving down a lot but it's another one I wanted to bring up here um, McDonald's um, you can see we made our lower high in here you guys see that possibility that we've created a little head and shoulders we rallied back to resistance in the chart right there to show failure. And although we're getting this bounce back up here today, we still haven't broken this downtrend chart. Okay, So we still have that potential that this resistance between here and here will do its job and resist this and this can roll over to the downside. If we look at our moving averages, you see where our problem is? Our 50-day moving average, we have failed it. And now our 50-day moving average is starting to flatten and may soon start to turn. Now, every trade that comes beyond that point, if we go back here, let me just go to a, a diamonds chart and go back a ways. When we get a topping pattern in the market and we fail that 50 day moving average, okay, as long as we don't come back up and break through resistance levels in the chart, we can continue to follow that trend to the downside and make multiple short trades on that move down. As long as the trend doesn't break, we can make multiple short trades to the downside. Okay, so it's not just a one and done. The blue ice failure puts you into that potential reversal pattern that could carry for weeks, months, um, could carry for years. Blue ice failure, moving average squeeze, just continues to repeat all the way down. Okay. So when you see that coming together, um, you know, an easy way to see that if you guys have ever used a guppy chart, not suggesting that you have to use a guppy chart, but it's kind of an easy thing to see if if I go to the guppy chart and go to Apple, see what's happening here. If you've never looked at a guppy chart, the short term moving averages are these kind of purplish blue. I don't know what you see it as the the salmon colored ones here, pink ones are um, the longer term averages. And all this is is just showing us a massive moving average squeeze occurring right here. Pushing to the downside. Okay. Now, the same thing is going to be the same pattern in reverse. 
take this pattern, take apple and flip it upside down. What what kind of a pattern do we have there, guys? Flip it upside down. What's the what's what's the pattern? Well, it would be head and shoulders. That's correct. It'd be a head and shoulders. Get that right. But it's also the rounded bottom breakout. That's right, William. It's the rounded bottom breakout. So all the rounded bottom breakout is, is the flip side of the blue ice failure. Okay. And if you look at a chart like... Um, plug big downtrend big inverted head and shoulders pattern okay possible rounded bottom breakout notice that that 50-day moving average all of these short-term averages are crossing up if I go to that guppy chart on this we're starting to build the moving average squeeze. As long as uh, plug doesn't fail here and head back down, because it can. Remember, it's got to prove to hold. Got to prove to hold. But if it holds in here, bounces up, we'll have a strong moving average squeeze to the upside. And that rounded bottom breakout will become very prevalent if we start pushing back through to the upside here on plug power. Now, the consolidation, once again, we can consolidate or we can have the pullback opportunity um, into that trade. So it can be this upside move and then we get the pullback to the 50 and hold. Buyer step up there. Same thing would be true if it props up and consolidates over for that move to the upside. So when you're looking for these patterns, we want to look for stocks that are kind of down in the dumps right now. They're the most hated stocks right now in the market. One that I've been bringing up a lot for, for watching, it's not ready to trade yet, is Pfizer. Pfizer, if I go to a weekly and pull this back, look at this level in here that Pfizer is setting on. Now, if that holds, and this downtrend, I'm going to go to a naked chart here so I can draw a little bit, and this downtrend breaks and we break above that, dunk on it, changing tools on me. And this downtrend breaks, that'll put us above the 50-day moving average. We pop up here and we hold. I have a trade. Okay. A trade that can produce some really good profits. If you're swing trading it, your profit target, what Rick will tell you in his class, is target's going to be up here around 200-day moving average. So big potential gains can be made in this pattern. Pop up here and hold for the upside opportunity. So right now, when we've got one part of the market just extended, stupid extended, in my opinion, you can disagree with me, but stupid extended to the upside. I'm looking for these underloved stocks right now because when they start unloading, these high flyers, and they will. When, I don't know, but they will. When they start unloading these high flyers, they're going to look for stocks that give them some good value and good upside potential. I don't know if it'll be Pfizer or Plug or any of these, but then these turn into fabulous upside trades. Okay? And you can pick those up with relative low risk and here again, if you're really, really picky about these trades, um, I'm not the guy that is going to tell you that 
you try to catch it when it pops through the 50. In fact, I'm going to tell you that is the wrong time to buy altogether. Okay, There is nothing about a moving average cross. There is nothing out about price crossing a moving average that is a buy signal. That is a warning to keep an eye out for the buy signal. So if this pops through here, then make it hold and then look for your entry into the trade because we can pop through over and over and over and then just continue to fail. Okay. It has to prove to hold. So watch that. And what typically occurs for me, the thing that I'm looking for in the round of bottom breakout is not the price crossing up or anything like that. I want to see that 50-day moving average flattening out and starting to turn. Because if it's starting to turn, our moving average squeeze is built to energy, and I'm looking for that entry. Okay, does that make sense? Very high probability trades, high percentage of winning. If, you're, if you are interested in consistency, you need to know the blue ice failure and the round of bottom breakout. Okay, You need to combine that with some rules, and that would be the price patterns that add to the probability of that being an entry into the trade. Okay, You do that, and these are going to win at a high percentage for you. Okay. And it doesn't matter the time frame. Um, doesn't matter the time frame at all. If we were to look, um, if I go, I don't know this to be true right now, but if I go to QQQ and I go to a five minute chart, the same patterns are true here. Okay, we create that inverted head and shoulders pattern in here. Break that little neckline. And you could just imagine, here, let me just come over here. You don't have to imagine. Okay. The hold of the 50-day moving average, the moving average squeeze right here. On that five minute chart repeats itself in every time frame and in every chart you'll ever see. Okay? Doesn't matter the time frame. Right? If I look at, um, a weekly chart, the same thing is true. There's your round and bottom breakout. There's your blue ice failure. Now, the only thing about the round and bottom breakout on the weekly is the 200 day isn't above it. So it's not technically a round and bottom breakout. The 200 is not above um, on this. It would be on the daily chart, not on the weekly. But you can see the same basic pattern is there every time market okay so when you start looking for even longer term trades um, you guys know I love longer term trades and um, I'm watching for plug okay if plug makes that move holds in here longer term I want that trade because I know that potential trade could last months to the upside you can swing trade it by going to the daily chart and just repeat trade it over and over and over 
as it climbs up out of this bottom. Okay? You don't have to long-term trade it. You can short-term trade it. Just stay with that upside trend as it develops. Okay. Make sense? Now, all of these trades are going to be improved. Your odds are going to improve if you focus on the price action of the chart. Okay? If you focus on the support and resistance trend chart. If you have a trade, I'm going to use like Mickey D's here at the moment. If I come over here, there's your rounded bottom breakout right there on Mickey D's. Okay, back this up. Here's your failure of the 50. Didn't come back up and give you a nice blue ice right there. Just moved down too strongly. We failed the 50 up here in a double top. Okay, but these patterns are repeatable and they repeat all over the market now in pretty much every chart. And the reason this is important to me, guys, is because they repeat with a high level of consistency. Um, what I was talking about in RWO before we came over here is you show me anything that I can get a high consistency, even if it's just very tiny wins at a high consistency, I can make as much money as I want with that trade. Okay, These repeat themselves and produce at a high consistency. So just watch and wait for the trades. Now what I was saying is you will improve your odds. We'll go back to the naked here. You will improve your odds of immediate gratification into a trade if you focus in on stocks that are holding near trend, near trend, and near a support level. Okay. By using technical analysis and the patterns that I'm showing you here, what we're looking for is just those little things that can give us just a tiny little bit more edge. By knowing this and being patient and waiting for this, you can actually improve your win-loss ratio by waiting for the consistency to occur here near that support and trend. Okay, and follow those patterns, the upside, or those potential patterns that could occur to the downside, back and forth in the same charts. It doesn't have to be an expensive chart. It doesn't have to be even stock. Works the same in ETFs works the same in my futures charts. It's identical on a very fast 333 tick chart. It's the same. Okay, because price is fractal. Um, moving averages are fractal. Doesn't matter what time frame that you use, the same patterns will repeat themselves. Break out of here, create the first higher low, follow the trend, winning trade. Get over and over and over. Break down, rally back, short, short. Back and forth, anything that you trade. You could trade currency, you could trade commodities, you could trade intraday, you can trade long term, doesn't matter. Now, to follow up on this, this pattern, to get those favorite patterns, so for example, the round of bottom breakout was right here. If you want to swing trade this, just remember, as long as we continue to hold trend, there's more opportunities to trade as we move up. 
that you can repeat this over and over and over as long as that trend continues. Okay, When that trend breaks like it has here, now we're wandering, we're searching, we're searching for the next trend. Okay, We don't know if it's going to be up or down. We have to wait for that to develop to show us the next possible trend. Okay, But if you just stick within those patterns, they, they repeat themselves with a high rate of consistency and you can turn in some really good money on trades doing very, very simple things here in the market. Um, uh, thanks, Bobby. Um, yeah, I don't really, yeah, I don't see myself as a great teacher or anything, but what I really do work for is that when anybody comes to listen to me talk and trade how many of you would you say that there's probably somebody in here that that says i am frustratingly consistent because the truth of the matter is guys i don't do very many things in the market i've built a career out of doing very few things and just working to be the best at those very few things that i can do I'm not saying I'm the best in the market. I'm always trying, I'm competing with myself to be better. And I do very few things. And so the things I know about the market, I know really well, because I have studied really, really hard. The thing, there's tons of things I don't know. Okay. I, I And you know, here's the cool thing, guys. Um, if you just learn to master one or two things in the market, you don't have to be a super trader. You don't even have to be sp special at all. If you master just a couple of things that repeats itself at a high consistency, you can make all the money you want to make. As long as you have the discipline to follow the rules and the patience to wait. All the money you want to make. Okay. just doing the same things over and over and over so looking at at these price patterns and these things in these charts if you work to study those and you look for these patterns as they develop well take it take it this way uh, one of the things that's happening right now is we're gonzo about these stupid earnings reports we're chasing everything at earnings now think about this what are your odds on any earnings report, guys? What's your odds of winning? Pretty sure everyone was pretty certain that Cisco was going to be good yesterday. Pretty certain that they thought Twillow was going to be good yesterday. Because they were moving up into the earnings report. That's right, it's 50-50. So think about what I said about the blue ice failure pattern, the round of bottom breakout pattern. They repeat with a consistency 70 plus percent, 75 plus percent of those trades are winners. Why would you ever want to trade earnings? Why would you ever want to play that game? Because if you do trade blue ice failures around a bottom breakouts, what you're admitting is I've got so much money that, yeah, I'm just willing to let them uh, gamble it here um, on these kind of trades. So, so think about that. What are you doing to bring consistency into your trading? If you can show me that you can consistently make money with, with, um, trading um, earnings then keep doing that but i ain't never seen anybody that could okay and i will put my results of winning trades against almost anyone in any strategy and i know i'm boring as all get out the way i trade 
And I know I'm very conservative in the way I trade, but I'll put my results against about anybody else because I hold consistency. And as long as I can maintain consistency, I can grow my account. So if you look at some of these long and short patterns and work to follow those clean, concise trends, you can repeat the same thing I do because, see, there's nothing special about me. There really is nothing special about what I do. I've just been focused more on consistency than being some kind of super trader or predicting where the market's going to go because I really, I, I know for a fact I can't do that. I don't even want to try. If I can find patterns that repeat at a high rate, that's all I want. I was looking, and, and I never know if they're going to work. I was looking at um, international paper, and I wanted to be in a long trade here on international paper. Do you guys see that pattern right in here where we popped up, broke the downtrend? I was waiting. See, the trend was here. So I had to wait for this to develop and it fell apart. See, that's the patience. The patience of waiting for the trade. The patience of waiting for the pattern to develop. And, and I know people hate me talking about that because they just want to trade right now. Just give me something right now that makes me money. But if you think about that, guys, that kind of knee-jerk reaction trading doesn't provide consistency. Are you here just to trade or are you here to make money? And for me, consistency was more important. If, if someone showed me a way that I could trade and make $10 at a 95% win-loss ratio, that's all I'm going to do from here on out. Because all I want is the consistency. Because I can make as much money as, as, I, as I can, you know, as I want if I have the consistency. Okay. Now, just because this fell out of bed here, doesn't mean it can't pop back up and come around and eventually do just exactly what I want it to do. But I gotta wait for it. I gotta be patient. Okay. So when I'm looking at stocks like Plug and seeing that pattern developing, I'm going to be willing to wait for the trade to show itself and then take that position. And I'll make that decision whether I'm going to, and by the way, I nibbled into this trade. Um, I bought a small position of stock on this trade. It's small for me. It's 100 shares. It's, you know, it's a cheap stock. So with the purpose of holding that in, in my portfolio so I'm paying attention to it when it gets ready to go. And then I'll load up and I'll make the decision, am I going to do it with stock? Am I going to do it with options? Am I going to do it with a combination of those? I don't know until I see it. But I know, and I don't know if it's going to be plug. I, I really don't. But I know that I'll find those trades because I find them all the time. And I've made incredible money just being consistent doing things that I know work really well and waiting for them. I don't have to trade every day or all the time. I have to be consistent with the trades that I make. Okay? To keep growing. Yeah. So I hope that was useful for you guys. Um, the blue ice failure, the round of bottom breakout, and the combination that I just talked about because it it puts in the moving average squeeze. I like the pullback opportunity, the pop out of the box that is included with that setup in the trade. And, and um, I'm ready. 
I'm ready to, to make a decision on a position. Okay. Um, Meta, last time I looked at it, um, is extremely bullish and it's stupid overbought. But if you're in the trade, I'd still be in the trade. Do I have any interest in buying it here? Not one tiny little bit. Not even a little. Okay. If I were holding it, if I were in it, I'd be still in it. But yeah, not looking to enter it at all. Absolute parabolic. You can't draw a chart any more parabolic than that. Going straight up. It can't last that long forever that way. It won't last that forever that way. So I don't know if that helped you. Um, like I always tell everybody, you can ask me about any stock, but be prepared for the answer. <laughs> any questions on any of that, guys, before I go? I'll give you guys a break before John comes in. Any questions? Hit me. Hit me. You got me for a few minutes. No questions? Uh, thanks, Tommy. I appreciate it. Um, If there's one thing that I could use to summarize what I just talked about here today, and that would be figure out what you can do to bring consistency into your trading. First off, you'll make more money. Second, you're going to enjoy your you're going you're going to enjoy trading a whole lot more. I mean, think about it, guys. Is is it is it much more comfortable? I mean, would you enjoy seeing your P and L graph be more like this, or one that does this? Consistency to me is far more important and I enjoy my trading a lot more because I work for consistency. Okay. I can't tell you that, Sean. Um, I will tell you that um, we're 1.7 standard deviations above the historical average when you take um, the S&P 500 against the, um, um, against the GDP. There was, in, in 2022, in January 2022, we were um, uh, two standard deviations above the historical average. So can we go higher? Yes. but there will be a limit. And the problem that I have with this market more than anything is the leadership of this market is as thin as I've ever seen it. There's only a handful of stocks that are really making great gains in the market. Okay, so it's thin. If that breaks, it's gonna be difficult of the market so when does it happen I don't know okay um, it could be anytime 
could be 10 minutes from now or six months from now. I have no idea. I'm not going to predict the market. I'm going to follow the market. Okay. Yeah, CLF is one that I have alerted on today um, in the chart. I think it's a really good looking chart. Uh, there was my alert on the chart. But remember what I said? Near trend and near support gives us the best opportunity in the trade. So if you want to buy this, it's perfectly reasonable to buy this. Your stop loss has to be underneath here. And you have to be willing to hold this all the way over to here. Because it's possible it comes back to this trend before it goes. Okay. If you look at the rest of the pattern on this chart, I know nobody wants to even see that. But there's a very good possibility this stays in here. So you got to think about if you buy that trade, how are you going to buy it so you can hold it for the time period that you need? If you buy it for the short term, you buy it right against this downtrend resistance, would you be surprised if it pulls back to test support again? So just because it's a big white candle today doesn't necessarily mean it's going to provide you with a consistency. In fact, look at this big white candle. It stops you out. Okay, This big white candle is no different because it's away from trend. It's okay if you buy it. Got no problem with it as long as you have the plan that I'm going to hold it even if I don't get immediate gratification out of it for that move to the upside. That makes sense, Ron? Look at this. Look at the chart. See the chart, not just the white candle. Trade the chart not just the white candle. Baxter, there's that nice little move up here. Nice little hold in there on that trend. Nice little hold right there on that support. Buyer stepping up. The only negative or other question that you have to have here on Baxter is how will this resistance affect this chart? Um, I think there's a possibility this move here could push us through that area of the chart. But if it doesn't, be ready to hold this for a little while longer if it has to back up and fill in here and then push on through. Okay. If you're not in it, if you're wanting to get in it and you're not really sure right here, let it break out. Because if you let it break out and it pulls back over here to trend, you're going to get in it at about the same price. And it may be a lower risk entry to get into it there. Okay. SLV. And guys, I teach this stuff every day. You know, in RWO, you, you can ask anybody in RWO if they, you can give me any chart and I'll, and I'll do this and I'll help people lay out trades and I'll show you exactly, you know, I, I may not be right, but I'll give you an answer um, on this and help you potential see the dangers in the trade and the, and the good parts of the trade as well. Um, SLV breaking that downtrend holding that support. Now this has to prove, right? Prove to hold. Hold in here, show me a buy signal, develop that upside trend, and then I'm interested. Right there with you on that one, Bobby. 
put it on the watch list and wait now. Yeah, cat um, on its own is a potential bullish trade. There's the trend. We looked at this this morning at RWO. There's the trend. Okay. It's not real close to a support in here, but the trend is is solid. And um, even if you look here, the three held in there at the eight. This is a trap long. Every reason to think this could continue moving to the upside. So as long as you can get in here and you're comfortable getting your stop loss underneath that black candle, then every reason, I mean, I can't tell you what's going to happen next, but um, it's following that trend. So every reason to believe it's going to go higher. All righty. Well, guys, thanks so much. I hope you got something out of this. I hope um, I hope you take that idea of consistency and work with it, because if you can build that consistency in your trading, you can take your consistency into anything tradable and trade it. Okay. Um, think about that. What can you, what can you do to improve your consistency? And what can you do by utilizing these patterns of mastering something and not trying to master everything? All right. You guys take care. Have a great afternoon. Thanks for listening to me. John will be in at, I guess, 10 after. He's going to kick it off. He probably knows I'm usually long-winded. <laughs> RWO folks, I'll be back before the close. Thank you so much. Have a great afternoon, and I will see you, little all, uh, RWO folks anyway, I'll see you in a little bit. Take care, guys.